Hello and welcome back to the studio. Today's Bob Ross classic is The Footbridge. It's a painting which I think a lot of people would like to paint, but they're just put off by painting that bridge. So let's see if we can include some tips and tricks in the video that will help you to overcome that little bit of fear. If I can do it, so can you. Now, one especially important thing is to thank everybody that's joined the channel recently as a subscriber. And if you want to show your support, give my painting a little bit of a thumbs up early on. It tells YouTube I'm doing something which you're enjoying, which other people would also enjoy. Anyway, sit back and relax, cup of tea, something stronger, and watch me paint the footbridge. See if I can get it right. Happy painting, people. So here's my canvas, 16 inches by 20. First thing I want to do is to mark the horizon line. This wants to be just a bit below halfway. I'll use my brush for measuring and add a couple of little matte pins as a quick visual reference. And either side is perfect. Next I'll add some Bob Ross liquid white oil paint to my canvas. This is a wet on wet oil painting technique. I've got two one inch Bob Ross brushes, the old one and a nice new one. And I'll use this old one to apply the liquid white. I'll scrub it on thinly. I've also got a fan brush, a filbert brush and a liner brush, but I didn't actually use the filbert in the end. I'll also be using a Bob Ross palette knife. I've got my liquid white in a small airtight pot for ease of application and using that old brush I'm going to take just a small amount and dot and dab it around the canvas and work it in well. You want a thin even coat. You can test it using your fingertips to check your fingerprints are just visible. I'll leave some links to some videos on this technique at the top and also down below in the description. It's essential you get this step absolutely right before you paint. Here's my palette for today's painting. I've got lots of colours out and I'll list them down below in the description. But the first one I'm going to start with is Indian Yellow. These naughty ones trying to make a break for it. I'll put some little sticky plasters by them. I'm going to use my liquid white brush again. Tap it well into the colour and then add a band of this Indian yellow colour right across above the horizon line. But notice I'm using little crisscross strokes. I want broken edges. Hard edges are hard to blend. And I don't want a stripey sky for my painting. Below the pins is water and I want level flat strokes for this, side to side. Next colour is yellow ochre. Again, tap it well into the brush. I didn't bother cleaning it by the way. And I'll add more crisscross strokes, just touching into the edge of the Indian yellow. Now you can see how much easier it is to blend my colours than if I had a hard line. Again, pull in from the edge for the yellow ochre. I want to try and leave a little bit of a light patch through the centre, like a sheen of light. With the same dirty brush, I'm going to go straight into bright red. This is for the very top section of my painting. More crisscrosses, more blending. The red is a very useful colour. It means I can add some clouds without getting a green sky. I dry cleaned my old brush and went straight into some black and just a touch, work it onto the palette well and check the colour. If you're not sure, don't go any further. Next, add a tiny bit of phthalo blue. And again, check your colour hasn't gone bright green. It only needs a little bit too much blue and you'll be in trouble. I'll touch a little bit to my canvas, just give it a tap and see if I like the colour. I'm happy, so I'm going to carry on. But again, if you see some green colour coming through, then stop and clean your brush well. I use my brush just to tap on the outline of some clouds. These are long, thin, stringy clouds. And just to help blend, I'm switching now to my nice brush, the old brush just has a bit of a limit, I'm afraid, on to how much work it can do. It's just too stumpy and bristly. You can see using this lovely soft new brush how I can tap and blend my sky. Notice though, I stay well away from the yellow. While I'm at it, I'll add some blue down into the water. I don't mind if this goes a bit green, it'll look quite nice. Again, edge to centre and leave that little sheen through the middle. I want to put some trees in my background and I'm going to carry on using my old brush for this. It's very bristly, which is actually an advantage. I've dipped it into a little bit more of that blue-black mixture. I'm going to start over here on the right hand side 
lay my brush sideways onto the canvas and just press with the tip of the brush. I want to leave an imprint of the bristles. I'll do a couple of faint ones to start with just to get the technique working well. And once I'm happy, I'll use a bit more paint and apply a little bit more pressure. These are distant trees, maybe in a forest. I vary the heights, some tall, some short. I'm going to be putting some fir trees over the top of these, so I don't want these ones to be too bold. If you're not sure, dry clean your brush before carrying on. Now, let's add some mist to the base of these trees. I've got my nice new brush back again. I just want to tap up and down into the base of the trees. If you need to add a lighter value to this, if they're too dark, for instance, go into a little bit of titanium white. And again, with firm pressure, just tap this on to create a soft, misty effect. For some background bushes, I'm going back into that black and blue mixture, this time tapping firmly on the corner of my brush. See how I splay the bristles wide open. And then, just in this lovely soft, misty layer, I use just the corner of the brush to tap and create some nice tree shapes. Make sure you don't lose too much of that misty effect. I'm going to continue this across my canvas. This is background foliage, so I don't want it too dark. And again, I'll use that soft misting effect to create depth and distance in my painting. You'll also notice that I've stayed right above my pin line. It's a very useful idea to know where that horizon line is because this is where the bridge is going to go. And that's my next step. Let's make a little sketch of the bridge. I don't want it going down or up. I want it level. And here's a neat little trick for you to try. I use my finger like a peg. I hold the end of my palette knife and line the top up with the end of the pin. So that is roughly where the top rail of my bridge needs to be. Notice how I use my finger to judge the distance. It's like a gauge. Now, hold your finger to the bottom of the canvas and just gently rub the tip of the knife across the canvas into the paint. It leaves a faint mark perfect for a level line. I've adjusted my knife for the bottom rail of the footbridge. Again, scratch gently and leave a faint mark. But if you don't like what you've done, you can always pick up your soft misting brush and just tap it out and have another go. You can do this as many times as you like. I'll make these marks a little bolder for the tutorial using the point of my knife. Next, I want to mix up a nice dark brown color, Van Dyke brown, and a little dark sienna. Mix it well and take a very small roll of paint about the size of a matchstick and just gently touch it to the canvas so you cover up your scratch mark. This is the handrail part of the bridge. Don't make it too thick. It's very hard to remove it once it's on there. Here's the foot part of the bridge. Now, using the small blade of the knife, I pick up an even smaller roll of paint and drop in some uprights. Keep them thin to start with. You can always make them stronger later on. I want one on the left, one on the right, and of course one in the center. I'll use a little time lapse to add some more detail. Don't forget, this is a rustic bridge, like most things I paint. That way, if they're a little off, well, it doesn't matter too much. For my legs, I want them to be a little stouter and maybe a little longer than they need to be. The last little section I'll turn into a reflection. Add a few more struts to support the bridge and I think we're done. Now for some highlighting. I'm going to use some dark brown, a little white ochre and even a touch of bright red. Get a small roll of this marble mixed paint and just gently touch the top rail of the bridge. I think that's where the light will hit it most. This paint should stick quite easily. But again, it's a rustic bridge, so any lumps and bumps are quite acceptable, I think. I'll add a little bit here to the side of the bridge, but maybe the area just directly under the footbridge part needs to be a bit in shadow. I'll leave it up to you how much detail you want to add to your painting. Now, grab a little bit of that paint where the bridge legs would go down into the water. I want to make this into my reflection. I'll even touch a little bit of colour on 
to represent the actual bridge itself in the water's reflection. Gently, with that nice brush, grab and pull down that colour and then brush across gently. Then I'll take some of this grubby white, make a small roll of it on my palette knife and add just a few water lines, just a couple of ripples, to show that there's some moving water around the base of these post legs. Let's start looking at putting some foliage either side of this bridge to give it some sort of context. For this I need a dark underpainting colour. I'll start with black, Prussian blue, a little leather and crimson and some thalo green for a change. This is going to give us a lovely foresty green colour. Mix those colours up well and check the colour on your palette. That looks about right for me. Unload your palette knife well, lay the paint flat and then go through that paint with your fan brush. Notice I give it a little wiggle just to distribute the paint evenly through the bristles and display the brush apart. Time for a fir tree. And I want them to go down to this level so I put a little mark in so I know where they're going to finish. And of course I need to know where they're going to start so make a little mark at the top of the canvas and drop in the center line. I'll put one here and another one here and maybe a fourth one there now lay your brush over at an angle and tilt it down I want to do some downward facing branches my brush is the right shape for downward branches so just touch with the corner and tap this is a pressing action not a brush stroke I want the bristles to leave a little imprint I'll zoom in a little closer so I can show you exactly what this looks like on my painting. Now I'm going to have some bushes at either end of my bridge, but I want to work on another fir tree. Now this is a slightly different technique and I'm using the same pressing action with my brush to fill in the center line of the tree first rather than zigzagging backwards and forwards. Some people find that tricky. So I do a nice dark central column and then I reload my brush and then I go back over it and add a few little outward branches. You might find this is a slightly easier technique if you're new to painting with oil paint in this particular style, but you try and see which one suits you best. I like both ways and they give slightly different looking trees. I think overall I like this one better because it gives me a slightly more natural ragged look, whereas the zigzag tends to produce sort of more of a cone shape. As I said, you see which suits your style best. If you enjoy my tutorials, don't forget to give this video a little thumbs up. It's so important and it really helps my channel grow by telling YouTube I'm doing something you're enjoying and my videos get shown to more people. Thank you. Now time for those brushes. I've taken my old one inch brush and you see I groom it in one direction through my paint. The brush has got a rounded side to it and that rounded side wants to face up. I go in, press and let the bristles splay apart and it leaves this sort of explosion of color on the canvas. It creates a textured surface upon which I can get some highlights to stick. Add one to both sides just to close that gap. Next, I want to do some rocks. I've got some black and some Van Dyke brown. I'll mix those together with my palette knife. Spread your paint down flat and then use the palette knife to pick up a small roll of paint about as big as matchstick. I want to put some rocks under the trees on the right hand side. I'll trim the bottom of the trees off with this lovely dark colour. Design your rocks so that they fit nicely under those trees and then think about adding some more rocks as you come forwards in the painting. I'll add a little reflection under each one. Just grab that little bit of colour and pull it down, just like we did with the legs on the bridge. I'll use my nice one inch brush just to pull it down again and smooth it across. Don't forget, edge to centre. I'll highlight my rocks with some of the marble mix from the top of the bridge. Again, take a small roll on the palette knife and hold that knife really gently. Let it just bump and tumble across the painting. Where it hits, it'll leave a little paint 
where it misses, it'll leave some dark. Allowing the paint to break gives you a great effect when painting rocks. I'll add some grass behind these rocks to finish off my painting. I press my brush flat into the paint. I've gone back to my old brush for this section and notice how I just tap with the flat of the brush, again creating more texture and I'm following the lay of the land. I'll bring my bank around to finish off the forward corner of my painting. I'll add some more land under the bushes on the left hand side while I'm at it. And I'll go in and just grab that little edge and pull down to make a reflection. Just press and pull straight down. Then with the nice brush, I've switched back, I'll do some little brush strokes across. Whoops, I lost the hair. Top tip, use your palette knife to collect those little stray hairs. Voila, first time. Now, let's add some more highlights to our painting. For this, I want to use a fan brush. And you can see from my paint, I've added a tiny drop of odorless thinness to it to make the paint nice and juicy and wet. A thin paint will stick to a thick paint. And the highlights of my trees want to be coming onto the left hand side. If you find the paint doesn't stick, it means it's just too dry. And a few drops of thinners will have you painting this highlight in no time. I'll leave a space here for that little bush and whilst we're watching, I'll quickly add the highlights to some of the other trees, but leave the odd one dark now and then. I groom my nice brush through some sap green and through some of these highlighting colors, cad yellow, Indian yellow, and give the brush a little push. You want to make sure the bristles splay open and produce a lovely lacy shape on the tips of the bristles. It's essential that the brush isn't clogged up. There all nicely opened up. Now, with the rounded side to the top again, just like we did on the underpainting, I want to go in and gently touch the canvas. Every little bristle has got a dot of paint on the end of it, so you just have to offer the brush to the canvas. You shouldn't need to push very hard. If you find yourself pushing hard, it means that either you've run out of paint or that the paint is too dry and won't stick. Once again, Add a drop of thinners, but not too much. You don't want it wet and runny. Inevitably, after a while, the brush will clog and you need to give it a bit of a dry clean. Otherwise, you end up painting bushes that look like, well, thumbprints. So a quick dry clean is all you need to do. Reload with some fresh color and add some more bushes. As you can see, they stay nice and bright and lacy and open but don't kill all the dark. For my grassy bank on the left, I want to load my brush by laying it on its side and pull the paint flat and give it a little push. Let the brush slide forward on the palette and it creates this little line of paint ahead of the bristles. The same line of paint is actually on the edge of the brush as well. So when you lay your brush against the canvas and touch, it leaves a little imprint. Once again, notice I save a few areas of dark. This gives your painting depth and a shadow line under those bushes. Notice I also follow the lay of the land down to the water's edge. I'm going to switch to my fan brush for some more delicate highlights. I'm using some Indian yellow, cad yellow, and I've added just a touch of white to my color to make it really sparkle. And of course, another drop of odorless thinners to make it thin and runny and sticky. I want to tuck some of these into that little shadow area up between the grass and the bushes. That bright color really catches your eye on a painting which is predominantly green. It's always useful to put in a few of these little accent colors. It really gives your painting some extra life. I'll drop one in here and there, and then add maybe a few extra touches of green between the bushes at the back and the tops of the rocks. I like to try and soften these edges somewhat, make it look more natural. In Bob Ross's original painting, he had a tree on the right hand side, but I'm gonna move it to the left hand side. And I'm using my liner brush, 
with a little bit of oak listeners into some of that dark Van Dyke brown and black mixture. Get used to holding your liner brush far back. You want to use just the tip of the brush like you're painting with a pen nib. I use just the very point and let the paint flow down to the tip. I start at the bottom and I work up. As I go up, my trunk gets a little thicker. Then I can detour off left and right, make some side branches, let them bend outward. And then as you get to the lower parts of the tree, the limbs are older and bend downwards a little further. Think of the tree a little bit like an arrow shape. It's a pretty good stock shape for a tree. Then I'll add a few highlights just to soften the base of the tree where it goes into the bushes. Let's not forget to add some water lines. Grubby white paint on the edge of your palette knife is all you need. So I'm quite pleased with my painting so far, but there are a couple of areas which I think let it down. And I've sat back and had a good look, and the areas are these reflections where they meet the water of the bridge should be a little stronger, they're not just bright enough. And I'm really not too keen about how these rocks look. They just sort of plonked on there, really. They're just a bit too light wedges of cake. So I think it's time for some refinements. And this is something I urge you to do with your own paintings. When you get to the point where you think, I've almost finished it, just take five or 10 minutes just to sit back and look at your painting and see where you could go back and just refine a few edges. It's small details like that that will really elevate your own paintings. So let's get on and make those changes. I've picked up a little bit more Van Dyke Brown and black mixture. And I'll just gently rub this on the canvas beneath where those posts meet the water's edge. I'll use a little bit of extra light here and there for some water lines. Now, these rocks, well, they weren't the best looking rocks. I've definitely painted better than this. And so I'll give them a little bit of a fiddle. I'll change the shapes a little bit, touch more color, a little bit more highlight, but sometimes in the end, you just have to bite the bullet and say they're not working and scrape them off. Now, this might seem a little drastic, but I would rather scrape them off and start again than live with them. So, let's put on some fresh dark color, Van Dyke brown and black, a new shape to work with, and reapply those highlights. I'll sit and play with this until I'm happy. I can do it over and over again, and you shouldn't be afraid to make the changes to your own paintings. They look much better now, I think. I'll grab that edge and pull down a little color for the reflection and add a small highlight, a few touches of colour to soften the edges, and I think my transformation is an improvement. But what about a bird? I'll paint a little oval in this tree and give him a little head and a little tail. But one bird's not enough. I'll give him some friends. So there you have it, my version of the Bob Ross classic, The Footbridge. But it wasn't the bridge in the end that caused us all the hassle. It was those pesky rocks. You can never tell when they're going to trip you up. Never mind. If you've enjoyed watching this, then there's another video coming right along. Happy painting, people.